You've just come back from a shoot and you have thousands of images to upload and sort through. Your camera was set on 20 frames a second and there's loads of duplicates and images that you may not want. What's the best way to cull those images and upload only the ones you wanna keep? I'll show you a couple different ways in using two different types of programs that kind of work together to make uploading lots of images very fast. All that, coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheiden, professional photographer, and today we're gonna talk about importing lots of images into Lightroom Classic. With today's cameras, it's easier than ever to overshoot, and I think it's a good policy to stand by when you come upon a subject. Just keep shooting. Milk the situation for all it's worth. Shoot until you have it completely covered. You can always delete images later, but you just can't make more. While this is a great wildlife shooting mantra to live by, it does come at a cost. Tremendous amounts of images from a shoot can take quite a while to import to Lightroom Classic. It also can take up a lot of space on your hard drive, saving images that you're never gonna use. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to handle large groups of images upon import. Now from a small shoot, say a couple hundred images, I put the card into the card reader and start the import directly into Lightroom. So let me refresh and show you how I do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is insert my card into the card reader, let that load up. And this is from a small shoot, so just 60 or 70 images that I shot. So when we come into the import dialog box, we're gonna start from left to right, just as if you would be reading a page. We're gonna go from, well, first we gotta find out where the images are coming from. And they're gonna be coming from the Z9 card that I just put in there. We'll click on that, all the images propagate over here. We're, what are we gonna do with them? In the middle is copy. We're gonna copy those images to the hard drive. We're not gonna use the hard drive on the laptop. We're actually gonna load them into the transfer drive that I have attached to the computer. So we'll go in here, Lightroom Culling, and import images. So those images are now going to go from the card. We can see right here, from the card. We're gonna copy them, and they're gonna come over into the import images. I always think we should double check to make sure where they're coming from, what you're doing with them, and where are they going. So that way you're always gonna keep track of your images pretty well. So now all these images, you can see there's about 63 images that are showing up here. They all of course have check marks because we're gonna be bringing all of those images in, into our hard drive, into Lightroom. So you have a couple of options. You can uncheck all and then nothing gets imported except the things that you wanna check or you can do check all and have them all imported. This is the way I do it when I have a lot of images. I'll go in here and I'll slide the thumbnails up so I can see them a little bit bigger and then come through and pick the ones that I want or don't want and I'll just uncheck the ones that I don't want to be imported. And these are gonna be images that maybe are out of focus or images that you have duplicates of or you don't like the expression on something. This is a pretty simple way just to come through and don't bother importing things you're never gonna use. You know, with the, with the eyes closed or whatever the case is, you don't need to import those. So you go through and that's a way that you can find them. You can also do this by double clicking an image to make it larger and using the, the arrow keys to go from image to image and see which one it is you want. And if you don't want something, you can come down here and not include it in the import. And that way you can see it fairly large and decide if you wanna keep it or not. These are all very similar. They were shot at 20 frames a second, so that's kinda of what you get sometimes. So this is how you would import this, and then you'd come over here and you would click import. And it takes a little while to start importing these images in, and you'll see here. We're just gonna come over here while that's doing that and make a little collection that'll just say uh, uh, small group. And we'll take all of these by doing Command A you know, on the Mac or Control A on the PC and just drag them all over into small group. And so they're gonna be in that collection. So you'll see all the images that we just loaded into here are all in this collection. So that's how I do a typical import of a smaller group of images. If you'd like to see more on how I import images with a lot of detail, check out my beginner's guide to Lightroom Classic. There's a video right here, I'll put a link and then I'll put a link below in the description, you can check that out. 
that's how I do a typical type of a small shoot import. However, when I'm going to do a lot of images, when I have a lot of images to import, I use a different way, a different method to get my images in quicker. So let's go ahead and start with that and I'll show you how this works. If you like this sort of content that I show on this channel, please remember to hit the like button, then subscribe, and then ring the bell to be notified of my next video. Or if you like, send me your email address to terry at imagelight.com and I'll add you to my mailing list and let you know via email when I have a new video posted. And then you can decide whether you want to go check that out or not. So we're in Lightroom here and we click on this file and you can see that these images start to propagate. It does take a while for Lightroom to take all of those NEF files in there to show them to us. So I don't like to wait for that. So what I do is I don't do this typically on a large shoot. I will use another program and that program is called Photo Mechanic 6. Now I'm by no means an expert on Photo Mechanic 6, but I do use it for this type of an import. And the way it works is you open it up and they have a couple of versions of Photo Mechanic. This is the most inexpensive one. And I just use it for bringing images in. You can click on to the folder. This is the folder that where my images reside on the card. And you just double click to get into the main folder where all images are and boom, they all come up. And you can see within an instant, all of these images are already there. And so that makes life a lot faster for me when I'm looking at my images. Now, if I wanna zoom these up, I can double click on them. It brings up a new panel that shows me a couple of things. It shows me the image, obviously, which is the most important part. It also shows me the detail of the image of what I shot, how the exposure was, ISO and all that sort of thing. So the easy way to do this is I just use the right and left arrow keys. So I can go through and click the images by clicking the right arrow key and finding images that I like. So as I'm clicking through, if I find an image that I like, here, here the bird is looking directly at me, I hit the T and the T on the keyboard will tag it. And you can see over here, when you press the T, the tag goes, if you press it again, it goes away. So tagging an image means, okay, I kind of like that image. So we can scoot through here and just start tapping the forward key of the arrow and tag occasionally the ones that we like. Anything that has some action, uh, we're looking for that sort of thing. Oh, there, there his beak was open, so let's go ahead and tag that. And we'll keep going. Tagging as we go. He's munching on seeds. Kind of looks like a movie because we're going so fast. But these are full res uh, NEF files. There's another one we'll tag. And let's go back and get this beak open again. We'll tag that. So as I'm looking through images, you want to find ones that have the good lighting, the good uh, body position of whatever your subject is. And you can use this for any type of imagery that you want to shoot. I, I learned this process from a wedding photographer who has thousands of images every weekend to cull through. And, and he uses this similar program to cull the images. And then you'll see what we do with them later. Now here's, here's something that's kind of interesting. If we zoom in close on this shot, you can see that this bird has kind of a swollen eye. This bird looks to be infected with house finch eye disease, also called mycoplasmal conjunctivitis. It's similar to the conjunctivitis that we humans can get. The symptoms are red, swollen eyes, and sometimes there's a discharge around the eyes that can kind of crust up. For humans, it's also known as pink eye. And as most of us have had it or know someone who's had it throughout our lives. The aspect of this disease for humans is that most of us know how contagious it is. So care needs to be taken with bath towels and such that we don't spread the pink eye to somebody else in the household. With a little care after a few days of discomfort, for the most part, it goes away. Now birds who get this kind of conjunctivitis aren't so lucky. It is just as contagious, can be caught by eating at the same bird feeder where somebody else had it and stuffed their head into an area that could transfer the disease. But this disease was first discovered back in 1994 when the house finches of Washington, D.C. were reported having swollen eyes. Many birds like this can recover, 
But if the eyes get swollen shut, they have a hard time finding food or they have vision impairment, which may lead to becoming easy prey for predators. Now this was the case for this bird. It either didn't see me well or didn't care because of its hunger, since these images were shot only with a 135 millimeter lens. Now it was the Plano 135 Nikon shot at 1.8, which is a fantastic lens, but it's not ideal for photographing songbirds because of its shorter length. But in this case, it worked. Now, by the way, the fix for house finch disease, since it's so contagious, is to take down your bird feeders, clean them thoroughly, and then put them up after a week or two. So there you have my unsolicited veterinarian advice from a photographer who is not an animal doctor. So take it or leave it. So we can just keep hitting this button going through and tagging the images that we like. Any of the images that we like, that we want to keep, that are worth keeping, the and, and, and my policy is anything I might like, keep, right? So we're not doing, we're not really, uh, we're just trying to cut out the ones that we know we're not going to like, where the position of the body is not good, for instance, on your subject, turned away, out of focus, uh, lighting's not good, any of those things. Oh, here he is looking up a little more alert, so we're going to tag that. Tag another one there where his head's tilted down a little bit. I like the color on his forehead. We'll tag that. And you can see that he's just sitting there munching away. Kind of looks like a movie, but all full res images here. And we'll tag as we go any of the things that we like. And there's a, there's a really good shot of how bad his eyes messed up. But, um, you know, we're just tagging away, shooting going through all these images as rapidly as we can. There we go. Tagging as we go. And you can see how much time it takes. This was a, a thousand and sixty two images that we started with. And we're just buzzing through these, picking out the ones that we like, picking out our favorites that we know are going to be favorites and not ones. If we're in doubt, we tag it. But if not, we just move on. So it's a pretty simple process. You're looking at them large. These are pretty large size images. Oh, he turned around. So now we got a little more action going. And when he turns back, we'll tag that one. Oh, look at that great light we got on that one. Knocked over some, some seeds. We'll take that one. And I think he flies away pretty soon. Maybe he just realized I was standing three feet away with this lens pointed at him shooting these pictures. He's looking around as best as he can with one eye. Again, we're just buzzing through, tagging the ones that we like. Goes pretty fast when you do it this way. Go through a lot of images fairly quickly. Again, he's turned away, so I don't really care for that image. But as we go, we can see, okay, there's a decent one in decent light. He's looking back at us. There's his jacked up eye. And he flew off. So that was pretty much the last image that we're going to keep. Okay. So now we have all of these images that have tags of images that we like. And so what I do is I come up here to the top. And instead of all showing all, I wanted to show the tagged images. So now I'm going to select all of those tagged images. And what I want to do is move these over into my um, Lightroom catalog. But we first have to just drag them into a folder. So I'm just going to drag them into this folder here from Photo Mechanic. And you can see it takes just a few seconds for it to drag all of those full res NEF files into that folder. So they're not in Lightroom yet. They're just out of Photo Mechanic and into... A folder. So now we're done with Photo Mechanic. We can quit that. It's going to ask us if we want to indeed quit it. The answer is yes. So now we're in Lightroom and we're going to do an import. So we go into import and this time we're going to import from the hard drive that uh, we've hooked up. So we just move those images over into and these are from Photo Mechanic. You can see these are all images that we just picked. So we picked out of a thousand images, we picked 96 photos to keep. So now what we're going to do 
is we're going to import them. Now, when we go from this transfer, we don't need to copy them anymore because they're actually residing on the proper hard drive. So what we're going to do is we're going to move them. Instead of copying them, we're going to move them because copying them would then make a double image of this in your file and it just takes up more space. But moving them are going to move them where we want them. We come over here and go to destination. We're going to come down to our transfer disk and we can see we're going to put them in our imported images. And while we're doing it, we're going to add them to a collection and that's going to be backyard birds that are already created. And so now we just double check before we hit uh, import. We see that we're transfer from the transfer disk. We're going to move them, not copy them, but move them over into another folder and then hit import. So we click the import and you can see here's the time it takes to upload 196 images as opposed to all 1000 images because there was a lot of waste of those images of duplicates and things that we don't necessarily need and we're not going to bog down our files with having so many images loaded in. So you can see typical import. Now we've got our 96 images are loading into Lightroom and that's how you make things go a little bit faster. So you use Lightroom for direct imports for smaller groups, but if you have lots of quantity of images, investing in a program like Photo Mechanic 6 is a pretty good way to go. There are other programs out there that do the same thing that can just help you cull images quickly, figure out the ones you like, tag them, just drag the tagged images over into the hard drive that you want to keep. And then instead of copying them, you are just going to move them because they're already there. You're going to move them into the proper folder. Now, all these images still reside on the card, of course. So if you want to keep them on the card, you can, or if you want to you know, test it out and see if that works for you. You're not getting rid of any images because they're still on the card. If you want to support this channel, go to my website, imagelight.com, and check out my digital products page. There you can instantly download my ebook on getting razor sharp images with my ebook, Razor Sharp Nature Photography. If you have any questions about what you've watched today, feel free to leave those comments in the section below. And since I read all the comments, I'll respond as best as I can. Until next time, this is Terry Vanderheim. Thanks for watching.